saying you niggas thought I was playing I'm lyrically transformed What's up my fellow shinobi, today I'll be doing a video about the god of the shinobi himself, Hashirama Senju. He's actually one of my favorite characters in the Naruto verse. So without further ado, let's get into the life of Hashirama. And like a lot of my videos, if you haven't seen Naruto Shippuden or Naruto itself, this will have heavy spoilers. You have been warned. Hashirama was born during the Warring States period, the eldest of Butsuma Senju's four sons. Hashirama and his brothers grew up on the battlefield, waging constant war with the Senju's rivals, the Uchiha. During his infrequent downtime, Hashirama met a boy his own age named Madara. The two quickly developed a friendly rivalry, be it skipping stones or urinating in rivers, with Hashirama typically winning their contests. Hashirama didn't approve of the practice of sending children to fight and die, believing it would only increase the bitterness between the Senju and Uchiha, thus causing more deaths. After the deaths of their brothers, Kuwarama and later Itama, Hashirama and his remaining brother, Tobirama, decided a new shinobi system would need to be implemented to end the cycle of child deaths. A system that would require an alliance between the Senju and Uchiha. Like Hashirama, Madara was also a shinobi who had lost brothers on the battlefield. Together, they imagined a world where children like themselves would need to fight and where their brothers would be safe from harm. As a precaution, Hashirama and Madara did not give their family names, but nevertheless discovered each other's identities. Hashirama was a Senju, Madara was an Uchiha. It was their duty to kill each other. Hashirama set this duty aside, unwilling to take his friend's life. Madara, however, decided their dreams of a peaceful world were impossible, and therefore ended their friendship so that they could kill each other without reservation. Over the following years, Hashirama and Madara continued to meet in combat. Hashirama could never bring himself to kill someone he still considered a friend, and Madara could never defeat Hashirama's superior abilities. In time, both Madara and Hashirama became leaders of their respective clans. Under Hashirama's leadership and extraordinary ninja prowess, the Senju began to best the Uchiha clan until, at one point, Hashirama had both Madara and Izuna at his mercy. However, unable to find the resolve to kill his childhood friend, Hashirama tried to convince Madara to unite their two clans to make their childhood dreams a reality. A mortally wounded Izuna convinced Madara otherwise, and they retreated, prompting Hashirama to send a ceasefire request. Although some Uchiha found the offer increasingly tempting, Madara was unwilling to accept after Tobirama killed his last remaining brother, Izuna. This didn't stop some Uchiha from joining the Senju side out of self-preservation. Racked with grief, Madara made one final stand against Hashirama and the Senju and was quickly defeated. Tobirama attempted to kill Madara to finally end the fighting, but Hashirama stopped him knowing that would only renew hostilities between the Senju and Uchiha. At Madara's suggestion, Hashirama offered to kill himself in order to achieve a peaceful resolution. As he was about to end his own life, Madara stopped him, moved by the gesture, and assented to peace. The Senju, the Uchiha, and all their affiliated clans came together to found a village of peace, where children would never need to die in battle. Hashirama and Madara, rekindling their childhood friendship, called that village Konahagu Jesus Konahagukure please do not quote me on this oh my god ah Jesus Christ you know it's Konaha anyway continuing the other countries would soon follow Konaha's example and build their own hidden villages it was his wish that Madara become Hokage the village's leader and protector at Tobirama's insistence the Hokage position was democratically elected and in the end, it was Hashirama that was chosen for the office. Hashirama wanted Madara to work with him as a brother and as his right hand so that he could improve his standing among the villagers and someday succeed him as second Hokage. Madara felt that position would inevitably go to Tobirama, which would in turn end badly for the Uchiha, with his position in Konoha rapidly diminishing and after being manipulated by the stone tablet Zetsu Altered, Madara decided the village was a failed experiment and abandoned it, intent on someday returning to face Hashirama in battle yet again. True to his promise, Madara eventually attacked Konoha on multiple occasions, 
After countless fights with the Nine Tails under his control, Madara challenged Hashirama to one final contest. The Nine Tails power, as well as Hashirama's efforts to capture and contain it, devastated the landscape, carving out what would later be called the Valley of the End. Hashirama spent the duration of their battle trying to reason with Madara, but Madara continued fighting until he was too tired to keep even his Sharingan active. This enabled Hashirama to distract him with the, with the wood clone, while the real Hashirama stabbed him in the back. Madara collapsed and before dying noted how much Hashirama had changed from when they were children. In the aftermath of the battle, Tobirama hid away Madara's body, and Hashirama's wife, Mito, sealed the Nine Tails within herself in order to contain its great power to Konoha's benefit. For a time, things were peaceful. Hashirama helped train one of Tobirama's students. Here is in Sarutobi. He got to spoil his first grandchild, Tsunade. He locked away the Scroll of Seals, the Kenjutsu it contained no longer necessary in the world he'd make. But the peace Hashirama had worked so hard for was starting to unravel at some point. Taki Gakure sent Kakazu to assassinate him. Although he defeated Kakazu, other wars began to break out. In an unknown time, Hashirama convened a Kage summit so that he could share the tailed beast Konoha had acquired with them, thus balancing power amongst them. But cooperation would not be so simple as Hashirama intended it to be. First by Tobirama's demand that the other villagers pay for the tailed beast they received. Then by the first Kaze Kage's counter request of money and territory in lieu of a tailed beast. As unrest began to grow, Hashirama shared his fear that any agreement they made would only be temporary, but also that future generations could forge a lasting unity. Ultimately, Hashirama's wish for peace would not come to fruition during his lifetime, and he died while Konoha began to flourish. Before his death, he passed the title of Hokage to Tobirama and instructed him not to mistreat the Uchiha. And we low-key know how that all kind of pans out. You know, Tobirama is low-key racist and prejudiced to the Uchiha, so uh, wishful thinking on uh, Hashirama's part, honestly. Now, as for Hashirama's children, there is no information on Hats Hashirama's children. Like, I've looked it up, and honestly, I've found some cringe fan art. I mean, whoever made it, um, you know, respect to them. But, uh, it, of course, it was ultimately not what I was looking for. Uh, before making this video, I looked on Google, YouTube, uh, checked a couple of theories, but none of it seemed to give me the answers I was looking for. Because we know he has children, because Tsunade is his grandchild. So, we know he has children. But the only information it gave out was about his wife, Mito Uzumaki. So, uh, yeah, we don't know about his children, but at least we know his grandchild is Tsunade, so I guess, eh. Now, let's talk about this man's abilities, because, I mean, at the start of the video, I called him the god of Shinobi, right? So, of course, he was famed to be one of the strongest, if not the strongest, Shinobi of his era. So, you know, th there has to be a reason for that, right? So, Madara, you know, another legendary Shinobi said that he was inferior to Hashirama, even with the eternal Mangekyo Sharingan and the Nine Tails at his disposal. So that's just, you know, that's saying something about Hashirama's powers right there. He was able to subdue and capture eight of the Nine Tailed Beasts on his own. So, you know, of, of course, like, <laughs> that's crazy power, you know what I'm saying? So, let's talk about everything else, right? So, let's talk about his chakra and his life force and all that. As a senju, he's a reincarnation of Asura Otsutsuki. Hashirama possesses a powerful life force and physical energy. This made his chakra remarkably strong and so dense that it could, it could visibly affect his surroundings when released as powerful shockwaves. During the Fourth Shinobi World War, after seeing Naruto distribute his and the Nine Tails chakra to the entire allied shinobi forces, Hashirama claimed that the distributed chakra amount was almost as large as his own. Almost as large as his own what the f okay, okay even i didn't know that jesus his chakra control is advanced enough to perform various complex and large scale techniques with only a few to no hand seals at all he was able to produce 10 wood clones while maintaining a kage level barrier this man was just built different he's a black air force with high tops Hashirama's life force also grants him enough stamina to fight non-stop for a 24-hour period while still left primed to battle. 
So this man can battle people for a day straight and still be in prime uh, condition to throw hands again. This man was just giving out hands to everybody, you know what I'm saying? It was a hands charity out here. So they said he had a will strong enough to resist the control of the perfected impure world reincarnation with ease, even after his, seal, his cells were used to strengthen the technique's binding. His body was rimming with vitality, granting him considerable regenerative powers that could mend most injuries with no residual effects, an ability that only Tsunade's technique or Naruto's own healing when he accesses Kurama's chakra have both came close to uh, mimicking his own. So, like, this man is just, he's just a, he's literally a walking buff right now. Like, what, what, what the hell? That's, that's fucking wild. So, as a senju, Hashirama was trained in a variety of shinobi skills. He could summon multiple Rashomon gates to protect himself from nearly any attack. He could use barrier ninjutsu, advancing up to subdue the ten tails. He had unprecedented skill in medical ninjutsu, able to heal wounds without forming hand seals. His skill in fuin jutsu could store several different types of weapons for battle, with which he showed versatile skill in buki jutsu. Able to fight on par with Madara, and in the anime he could break Madara's control over the nine tails. His nature transformations were also pretty high, high level. Hashirama was proficient in all five basic nature transformations, along with yin and yang release. He was most famous for his use of wood release, a combination of earth and watered nature chakra, creating wood and plants from the ground of his very being, of his very being of various sizes and shapes that he manipulated to his purposes. This ability was apparently exclusive to him as no one else had naturally acquired this power. Any replications are noticeably pale in comparison to Hashirama's capabilities. Hashirama could completely change the landscape with his constructs. He also had more ingenious uses, usages such as making wood clones that are nearly indistinguishable from himself. He could make flowering trees whose pollen rendered opponents unconscious, protective structures able to withstand tailed beast balls, giant hands to apprehend large targets, as well as giant humanoid creatures able to clash with Madara's complete body, Susana. In the anime, his precision and dexterity with his wood release could he wield and launch his various weapons from afar, allowing him to attack from multiple angles. Hashirama's wood release also granted him a method of subduing and controlling the tailed beast by making direct hand contact or channeling it through his wood release. Hashirama could use the Hokage style 60 year old technique, Kakuan entering society with bliss bringing hands, to put the beast to sleep. He acquired several tailed beasts in this way and was able to maintain control over all of them at the same time. Likewise, he could create wood dragons to wrap around any targets and absorb their chakra. It was by this power that he earned fame as one of the few people who could completely control a tailed beast. Now let's talk about his senjutsu. Because of his large chakra reserves, Hashirama could use senjutsu in enter sage mode, a feat he could perform instantaneously in this mode. He gains red or black in the anime, markings around and under his eyes as well in the middle of his forehead. While it's unknown where he's learned it, Hashirama proved formidable in its usage. Riding about on his wood techniques as a means to be mobile in battle, while maintaining the stillness of oneself need to continue building up natural energy. To keep this mode activated, Hashirama could perform powerful seals to bind targets, even those as large as the ten tails. The power of sage mode would also greatly augment his wood release, causing his constructs to be <clears throat> to become considerably large and more dangerous, as seen with his largest creation, Sage Art would release true several thousand hands. And guys, this technique is just crazy. This is this is like one of my favorite skills that I've seen him use. By using it to deliver an enormous barrage of punches, it could strip Susano from the Nine Tails. Plus, was chiefly responsible for the formation of the Valley of the End. Wow! Like again, I'm telling you, this guy is just the embodiment of Black Air Forces. He was about to smoke. He wanted to smoke. If you wanted to smoke, it's it's not even an issue, bro. That's why I like Hashirama. But uh, this is where I ended. I mean, also, like, another thing, again, like, with his children, like, he was a badass. So I would expect his children to be badass, right? I mean, his grandchild's badass, Tsunade. But, you, you know, you would expect his son or his daughter to be just as badass, right? Like, even his wife was badass. She sealed Kurama the first time. So, like... 
You, you know what I'm saying? She was the first in Cherokee. If my knowledge is correct. I got I, I gotta look back on that. But like that's that's the issue I'm having here. Cause like he died. But they don't specify where he died, how he died. They just say he died in battle. And that is what really irks my nerves. This walking black air force with armor just randomly died? Like if you can throw hands for 24 hours and still be in prime condition, who beat you? Madara claimed to be the like one of the strongest shinobi in the, in the, the time. You beat him. No one on his side was stronger than him. Who beat this man? Or who jumped them? Like, did three whole villages jump him and kill him? Like, I need to know this. But anyway, uh, that's all the time we got for today. So, uh, if you guys like content like this, I'm definitely going to do more. I'm definitely going to stay on, stay in the realm of Naruto. I know I got to uh, read the latest chapter of My Hero Academia, Damia, and uh, Dragon Ball Super. And I'm definitely going to do a manga chapter review on those as well if you guys are interested. So if you like stuff like this, like, subscribe. I'm definitely going to do more of this in my free time. Or if there's people that you specifically want to know about, let me know. I'll read up on them, write down all my research, and I'll do a video about them. But anyway, this has been your boy Modern Ninja, and peace. Mm -hmm.